Brittany and I'm back in the new year 2021 here we go let's hope it's a little better than last year um, it's been a wild start but you know let's let's hope that things can only improve right <laughs> um, it has been a very long time since I've spoken with you last I made a video, I believe I was still in Nashville, and I had very cruelly teased you all with something I was very excited about, and then made you, I made you guys wait in anticipation for months. I think I do have a good excuse for that, um, I will go into that. <laughs> um, so I was supposed to be uh, teasing my new mystery stitch along. I've done one for the last four years. This one's going to be my fifth one, the 2021 Mystery Sal from Ingleside Imaginarium. And um, it, it just took its time happening. I uh, actually, I had mentioned in the last video that I was going to be moving back to New York, which for those of you longtime viewers, you will know that this is my small, small bedroom in New York City. And um, I, yeah, I was getting ready to move back here to get back to work at the costume shop. And good news, I am back at work. That's all going fine. But the day after I arrived here, my dad called me to say that he had tested positive for the coronavirus. And even though I had intended to quarantine the 14 days recommended slash necessary for people coming from Tennessee to New York. Um, that kind of changed things. And uh, I had to do a really hardcore quarantine in my room, my tiny room, and uh, mask up and try and order in groceries and um, just try and be as safe as I could with my roommates. Um, which I'm happy to report that, to my knowledge, it didn't spread, which, here we go, uh, the reason that this sal has taken so long and why it's been such a long time since I've seen you guys is that I caught it from my dad. So I did test positive for the coronavirus. Um, I took a test the day after I arrived here when I found out my dad had tested positive. That test actually came back negative. So my experience and I just want to share for everybody because you know it seems like we're going to be dealing with this virus a little while longer um if you test negative within you know what is probably the first three to four days that you have the virus um yeah you can you can test negative um so it's still uh very wise to be careful with quarantining you know up to a whole week after you think you've been exposed um but uh, the day after I tested negative, I had a fever and I had a feeling that it was a it was a false negative, which it was. Um, a few days later, I went back in and got tested again, and that's when I tested positive. Um, and it was a real blow to me, not so much physically. I had very mild symptoms, um, but it, just mentally. I was feeling really guilty about having brought it here to New York. I was feeling frustrated, angry. I had been so careful all year and then the, the you know this would happen right when I'm making the move back to New York and um, it was rough I won't lie about it and what was maybe even rougher than you know the week and a half I had symptoms was uh, the lingering symptoms that I have been struggling with for um, you know I I feel like it's been since I had it and that was back at the beginning of November um, it was worse, I think, in November and December, but I've been dealing with um, a fatigue. Uh, when I first had recovered and I was just going back to work and getting around the city and everything, um, it uh, I would get home and just have no desire to stitch. I was too exhausted. Um, that's the subway, uh, by the way. If you are unfamiliar with my New York filming location. I live very close to an above ground subway uh, rail and um, it can be a little noisy. But um, anyhow, I've just been dealing with a lot of fatigue and with that a lack of motivation um, to spend my, you know, as, try as, I, as hard as I can to 
buckle down and focus, just having a really hard time doing that. To get the stitch along, the model stitched, and the design ready to release to you guys. So it's taken a while, but better late than never, right? So this is my 2021-ish uh, stitch along. It is uh, 12 months long. Um, and because it's starting now, actually, I just released the first part, which is the border of the pattern today, February 1st, 2021. Um, we're actually going to be two months behind and there might be two months overlap into next year. And what that means for next year's sell, which I'm assuming right now there will be one, um, I don't know yet. Um, we'll have to wait and see come the winter what happens. Um, Okay, I'm not going to keep you in any more suspense. I just felt like I needed to explain why it's been such a long time since I've seen you and why it took me so long to get this out there for you guys to, to start stitching. And so, without further ado, the Ingleside Imaginarium 2021-ish stitch along is called the Karamas Bestiary. Um, that is spelt K-E-R-A-M-O-S. It's a Greek word. Um, that was used in ancient Greece to represent the work that a potter did. So pottery, um, anything that, you know, someone who works with clay would make. And it's actually where we get the word ceramics from. Uh, so, and I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I looked up a video, but Karamas, I think is, is, is close. Karamas. Um, but this is it. So as you can see, it is in the shape of a Grecian urn or pot or vase or amphora, whatever you would like to call it. And um, it's going to be an exploration in the creatures encountered in Greek mythology. Hence, bestiary. So Keramas bestiary and um, it only has three colors, uh, which you can see here. We have uh, DMC 310, the black. We have DMC 3777, the dark terracotta color, and then B5200. Um, so in order to design this sal, I did a lot of searching of the internet for uh, these pictorial representations on the actual actual ancient Greek pottery um, of these mythological creatures um, because while there are there were probably millions I can't even put a number on it um, over the the centuries that the ancient Greeks were making pottery um, and while some of them were merely functional and we have examples of just plain amphoras and, use, you know, jugs for water and storing things, you know, all of that stuff. Uh, what of course comes to mind immediately are the very intricately painted um, vases and jugs and, and pots and jars um, that have the kind of relief silhouetted uh, figures on a background with the, with the bands. Um, going the circumference of the pot and uh, I just thought that that could be a really great uh, stitch, uh, cross stitch design and um, I'm really excited about it. When I was little I loved Greek mythology and of course as you all know I love fantasy creatures and a lot of the typical fantasy creatures that we encounter in you know modern fantasy uh, you have like Pegasi, Pegasus, winged horses, and, you know, My Little Pony, you have centaurs in different, you know, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. There's centaurs in the Narnia uh, Chronicles. There are centaurs in Harry Potter. Um, you know, Fluffy from Harry Potter is a, is a three-headed dog, uh, and that comes from Kerberos from Greek mythology. So, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of those creatures overlap into today's represent, you know, today's interpretations of, of the fantasy genre. Um, so I thought it would be really fun to go back to kind of their original forms and their origins. And that is in, in Greek pottery. There's some of the, the earliest representations of these creatures. Um, and so 
what that means is that by the end of by the end of the year, well actually not the end of the year anymore, but when, when this stitch along is over, you will have 12 examples of creatures from Greek mythology. So in designing this stitch along, I tried my very best to be as uh, loyal to the original artwork that um, each creature was inspired by as I possibly could. But of course, switching from one medium to another means I have to do a little bit of artistic interpretation but they're all going to be based on the black and red figure style of Greek pottery, which um, generally is a kind of a silhouetted figure with uh, thin painted details all around it. If you look up Greek pottery on, you know, Google or another search engine, you will um, see what I mean by that. So there is going to be quite a bit of back stitching on here. I have maybe overstated the amount of backstitching by calling it a lot of backstitching in caps in my uh, posts describing it, but um, compared to last year's Familiar Sal, it is a lot of backstitching. But if you were to compare it to, you know, the kind of traditional backstitching method that is seen in a lot of vintage patterns, where it basically is an outline and every detail in the, in the um, creature or subject is uh, backstitched. It's similar to that. Um, and some months have more backstitch than others. There's going to be one month that has almost no backstitch, and then there are going to be other months that have a ton of backstitching, for example, if they have feathers or something. And um, yeah, I think that's everything I need to say about it. Um, I did want to mention the fabric. This specific fabric is a 32 count Jobelin in a color called Bittersweet Light by Wichelt. I was trying to make things easier for stitchers to find a model fabric and pick a bigger manufacturer, but I think everyone is having issues with fabrics. So if you can't find this color, again, look up images of Greek pottery and, uh, you know, you can decide what will work. I think um, a lot of kind of the peachier um, to tan to yellow neutrals should work okay on this. Um, all of your B5200 is going to be um, either stitched with black, either backstitch or cross stitch with black around. Cause like you can see the clouds there um, are filled in B5200 um, and you can see them on the fabric because of that black outline. So just like any of my other stitch alongs, uh, you sign up for this uh, stitch along by purchasing it. Um, it's $18 up front. You don't have to pay any fees after that. And I will use an email address that you provide, whether it's linked to your payment account or you provide a separate one. Um, I will send out the pattern updates at the beginning of each month. So our first creature uh, up here, which you can see I've already gotten a teeny tiny start on it because I forgot that I should probably make a video before I get too far on this. Um, is going to be delivered March 1st. So I tried to give you guys at least a month to get the border done. It's pretty hefty. Um, it's, it's a big border and these handles are no joke. Um, but the first uh, creature is going to be up here in the neck of it. So um, if you start, you know, here and work your way up or however you like to start your projects and you get just kind of this space done, you'll be ready to go. Um, so I have the starts of this creature going. Um, I'm still, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, having some um, fatigue and it's, it's not as bad, but like I'm just pretty much exhausted all the time. Um, so I am behind. Normally I would have had probably this done already, but um, as soon as I'm able to provide a little peek at what the creatures will look like, um, specifically the first creature, give, you know, give a little peek of that so that stitchers can decide if they like the style or not and if it's a type of stitching they'll be interested in. Um, I'll do that as soon as possible. Um, but the other exciting news uh, that I wanted to share with you on this video, it involves purchasing this pattern. You have two places to purchase it. You can either purchase it on Etsy, like normal. Um, I have not you know, it'll, it'll be available there for those of you that need to use PayPal, for example. Um, but I also have it available on my brand new Ingleside Imaginarium website, um, which is www.inglesideimaginarium.com. 
and uh, you can purchase it through there. I am, I think, trying to kind of transition into my own independent website versus using Etsy. So if you were going to use your credit card to purchase anyway, if you could head over there instead, that would be great. Um, I have not gotten um, a PayPal business account yet, so I can't link PayPal to it yet, but that is a goal for this year. Um, but yeah, you can go check out the new website. I still have a lot of work to do and there's still certain patterns that need to be uploaded onto it, but it's got all of my main you know, all of the ones that I uh, feel like have good model stitches and good photos up there. And as I'm uploading them, I'm editing the PDFs uh, to where hopefully in the future I'll be able to print them out and send people hard copies as well. I don't have a date on that. Um, another announcement, I was supposed to go to market this year, but um, if you haven't heard, market has been canceled due to the pandemic, which is completely understandable. And I totally respect that decision, um, especially having had it, you know, the coronavirus already and, and these new um, strains that are uh, going around. I think it was the smartest idea. Um, and so my goal was to have been prepared with paper copies to uh, bring to market with me, but it hasn't happened, it's, you know, I'm trying to keep up my motivation now that it's been canceled to get all this stuff done and uh, help Inglefied Imaginarium grow. So yeah, check out my website, keep an eye on it. Um, there is a kind of journaling page there, a blog there that I'm hoping I can post sneak peeks to. Um, sneak peeks will also be posted in the Inglefied Imaginarium, share your work group. Um, and uh, yeah, just let me know if you have any questions about the stitch along. Um, I think there's a boy here who's going to come say hi as a reward to you all for listening to my, my video. Oh no, Rhaegar, come back. Come here. The people would like to see you. Come here. Come on. Come on now. Come here. Come on up. He's thinking about it. Look, yeah, there's his little face. Come on. Yeah, come up. There he is. There's the boy. Um, <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> uh, and one last thing that I'm going to show you guys. I have been really trying to... Um, <laughs> that's rude, Rhaegar. Don't do that. I've been... Uh-oh. I've been really trying to um, get this done. And so I've not been doing a lot of stitching on other models for Ingleside Imaginarium patterns. Um, but I did get this done just because I wanted to be able to finish something. And it's the model for a freebie that is up on my freebie website, which those hopefully will move to my new website as well. But this is the two, the, the 2017, oh, he loves you guys. It's the 2017, um, sorry, the 2017 holiday dragon. So he's just a, a little snow dragon. Um, and he's still pretty topical. It's it's winter time. This is I don't think how I'm going to finish it because I would like to. Um... <laughs> you guys are getting all the kitty love today. I would like to um, make it into an uh, ornament. Um, and this is a little big for an ornament, but just to show you guys, I, I just stuck it in a hoop. So I'm pleased with how that came out. I'm hoping to get models for all of the holiday dragons done. Uh, we'll see when that, oh my gosh, we'll see when that happens. Um, you're so funny. See, you know, being a loving boy today. But I think that's everything. I just wanted to share <laughs> those exciting announcements, being the new Stitch Along, the Karamos, uh, the Karamos uh, Bestiary is the name of it, and the uh, website. Inglesideimaginarium.com. Check it out, and uh, yeah, keep your keep your eyes on that page and my Facebook page uh, for sneak peeks. Um, I'll try and put them on Instagram as well. And uh, yeah, with that, um, it was a hard decision to make to postpone the stitch along, but I had a lot of support from you stitchers, um, letting me know that it was okay to take the time I needed to feel better and hopefully. Um, heal up and get used to, you know, life after COVID and also 
being back in New York and getting back to work. It, it was a lot all at once. Um, so I just want to thank you for your, for your support and, um, you know, just, just for your support with my patterns and my business in general, as well as the support for me as a person, you know. So one thing I wanted to say before I leave is happy Black History Month. It is February. So that means it is the, the first day of Black History Month today. And I wanted to share a resource, um, kind of subscription, uh, that I signed up for, um, by a group called Anti-Racism Daily. Um, they're doing a 28 days of black history, um, and they have curated, uh, speeches and, um, I think profiles and different creative, you know, art forms, uh, that are all part of black history and they're emailing out, um, one example of these things per day in the evenings for people to consume and to think about and reflect on and, and learn um, for Black History Month. And I signed up and I want to encourage any of you that are interested to sign up to sign up. You just need to, to give them your email address and they'll send it to you. Um, and if you miss a day, don't worry, um, they'll send you the first day of the day you sign up. So um, you'll get the whole 28 days. Uh, it's free. There is an option to pay them a dollar a day to support um, the work that was put into making these resources available and the subscription available. Um, so uh, yeah, I just thought I would I would uh, mention that because I think that's a, a pretty cool and accessible way for those of us who feel like, oh, there's so much to learn about, you know, Black history that I definitely feel like um, we don't learn so much in, you know, regular school curriculum, um, or we don't, you know, we only focus on it one month a year. And yeah, I just think it's a, a great way to be exposed to uh, black history um, and like really easy for us, you know? So uh, I encourage you to go look that up. I will put the link to that in my, um, in the video description so that you can, you can do that if you want to. Um, and with that, I'm going to say happy February, happy 2021, um, and happy stitching to all of you. Thanks again for your support. It's really meant a lot these last few months. They've been rough, but it's, it's just going to get better. Gotta have, gotta have that hope. So, um, stay well, stay healthy, everybody. I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>